I hope we don't come to that, although we can't rule it out. Yeah, we can't really rule it out. The virus situation is changing all the time. I wish we can avoid that because the disruption to lives is tremendous. Yeah. And also, I have always expressed this view that in terms of disruption, it's not just the parents' lives disrupt, being disrupted, but also when the kid is at home, you don't expect them to stay at home. Some kids may be very obedient. They will stay at home and do their homework and do their reading. But I think if I'm in their shoe, I'm, I'm the type they will probably run out. Yeah, and we are run out. I, I'm not sure if it's a safer environment than if you have kept them in school. So I really have a big doubt in that. And there's something to discuss with our healthcare experts. What kind of exposure is actually safer for kids? Bearing in mind the third, uh, the, the other important consideration that somehow the evidence coming out from different countries, including ourselves, is that children are less affected by this virus. Yeah, we need to understand that more, but empirically the results appear to be so. I must say, if this virus behaves like influenza, that means children get it more than adults and children become vectors for transmission, passing through the school from one parent to another, from one family to another, I think we would have closed schools long ago. Long ago, no need to think, given the kind of uh, dangers that this virus can expose people to. But this virus behaves differently, which therefore gives us the option now to take precautions in school, keep it safe, but yet be able to keep school and therefore keep work, keep the economy going.